Okay, I'm here I am back again. Oh, I'm so close to the end of this. Now, I'm sure there's a lot of mistakes that I made. So I, I made a really an error here, which is I didn't even try to run my code. And uh, there was a big there's a big typo here already, which is that this should be the is this and this might actually even be weights. Like I think I might not be like being careful about my right these these that's weights plural. So that's totally wrong. Weights plural and this is not this is input to hidden. And this is also input to hidden deltas. So that I should have said. And I wonder if I made that mistake here, like this dot weights, that should be weights. I got this right. So let's try, let's try running the code. I, you know, I have no idea. You could, put, you could put odds on whether there's any errors. I would put very, I, I give myself like 50 to one that there's no errors. Um, so let's go and just, because if you recall, I have in the sketch, like I'm setting myself up for a very simple scenario of two inputs, uh, uh, two inputs, two hidden nodes, and two outputs. Um, line 99 typo. So I should, guess I should check. There might even be a typo in line 99. Oh, that's a comment, so I don't know what that is. Uh, all right, all right, let's just, let's just hit refresh here. Identifier inputs has already been declared. Neural network.js line 59. So let's see what that is. Oh, I forgot. So I don't, oh yeah. Oh, this, interesting. So um, this should probably be called input array, like I did with feed forward. And in that sense, this should probably be target array. Because, and then, targets equals matrix from array target array. So let's just do that. So that's important because I'm letting the end user pass in the inputs and targets as simple arrays. And internally in the library, I'm converting those to matrix objects. Targets is not defined, neural network line 71. Oh, and the, so this has to be let targets because it's a new variable here. <laughs> There's no errors. <laughs> okay, weird. All right, so let's move on. Now, this is really tricky. I probably could have been much more thoughtful about how I'm doing this, um, uh, but here's the thing. I now need to add the, del the, the deltas for the biases. Now, if you've been following along, here's how I've Here's how I've connected all this stuff. I made a video a long while back, oh, in yesteryears of days, when it was just a one-dimensional y equals mx plus b. I made a video about gradient descent, where delta m is the learning rate times error times x, and delta b is just the learning rate times error. Well, this is the analogous situation with matrices. Learning rate times error, this gradient, so to speak, is this whole thing over here. And the x is this thing over here. And the same thing here. This is the delta, the delta, I mean, sorry, the gradient, which is this, times the inputs, which is x. So the, the deltas for the biases is actually not a matrix, right? The biases is a one column vector, basically, one, ma one column matrix, which is a vector. And so the delta biases is actually just this part. This part and this part. And guess what? I have already calculated those things. So if you look at that here, oops, if I go back to my code, right, this is before uh, where, where is it? Um, right here, where am I? Ah, gradients, right? Right here, I am ca I'm passing the outputs through the derivative. I am multiplying element-wise with the errors and the learning rate. This, and then I have to do the transpose and get, but this is it. These gradients, I can just say uh, biases, this dot bias, and where am I? Output dot add gradients. So uh, let me actually well, let me actually put this. <laughs> where did I go? Let me put this here. So this is adjust the weights by deltas, and now adjust the bias by its deltas, which is just the gradients. Uh, okay, and then I should be able to do exactly the same thing with down here. Uh, oops, this will come after. And what I want to do is adjust the hidden bias with the hidden gradient. Now, I've, I'm, one thing that's probably inconsistent, and maybe I'm just going to kind of leave it, but if anybody, as, as um, you, I, I, this is a, I'm going to put all this code in a repo, uh, which is already there. It's just called like toy neural network. Um, and so one thing that probably should be consistent is when I'm saying like weights versus weight 
or gradient versus gradient. So that can be cleaned up later. Let me just see if I have any errors. No errors. All right. Dare I do something next? Okay, so here's the thing. Um, I mentioned before, now, how you collect and prepare your data is so important in terms of the ethics of what you're doing, the scientific accuracy of what you're doing, and I'm, I'm kind of glossing all over that just to make this toy neural network library. But beyond just sort of like being thoughtful about collecting your data, we've got to figure out like, how do I even like do this? And so there are a variety of techniques in terms of calculating the error over time and batches and then adjusting the weights versus, but I think what I'm gonna do is called stochastic gradient descent. Let's Google that. <laughs> that. Let's just make sure I've got the right term. Stochastic gradient descent is uh, known as incremental, dis is an uh, iterative method for minimizing an object that's written as a sum, blah, 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 blah. So I think I'm, I'm, I'm correct in that what I'm doing is, in other words, what I'm going to do with stochastic gradient descent, which I think is what I did with my perceptron example and my linear regression example, is that for every single record, every single data point, I'm going to pass it in, calculate the error, backpropagate, gradients, adjust one at a time, instead of doing batches that you, but, but be aware of this idea of batches because that's a core concept as you start to use other people's like real, actual, robust working, deep learning libraries and examples and that sort of thing. So I'm gonna do this stochastic idea, which the, one of the reasons why I wanna do that, I don't know why I switched over there, one of the reasons why I wanna do this stochastic idea is it's basically already what I've done. So this train function simply takes a single set of inputs and a single set of outputs targets, does all that it needs to do to it, adjusts everything, and finishes off. Let's do that. I don't need, I'm, let's, let's try. Oh my goodness. Ah! So let's, let's prepare a data set. I'm going to do this. Oh, okay, so I like, I'm like terrified to erase this. I guess I have to. Let me take a moment and erase this. <laughs> um, okay, so here's the architecture I'm going to use. I'm going to have an input, input layer. I'm just going to say layer. Two inputs. I'm going to have a hidden layer with two, uh, two, two nodes. Then I'm going to have an output with just one. This is a nice architecture for trying to solve the XOR problem, exclusive OR. I just want the simplest thing just to kind of, I need some way of kind of debugging and validating that something in my code is doing it correctly. <laughs> so. What I'm going to do is, um, so this, th it's going to look like this. And so for my data set with, uh, is going to be this following. Um, one comma zero gives me a one. Zero comma one gives me a one. One comma one gives me a zero, and zero comma zero gives me a zero. So this is the classic non-linearly separable problem that I discussed with the perceptron. A single perceptron can't do it. This is now a multi-layered perceptron with gradient descent and backpropagation in my code. So I should be able to continuously feed it this training data set. Now I said, you need a training data set and a test data set. But this is like such a simplistic problem. There's only th four possibilities. It'll be interesting to look at, you know, visualizing it and letting these be continuous floating point values. But let's, l let me just do what I'm doing. So I'm gonna put into my code the training data. So I'm gonna say, uh, I'm gonna say, uh, let training data equal, I'm gonna have it be an array and each element of the array is going to be an object. Inputs, 0, 0. Targets, 1. So I'm kind of, I could put this in a JSON file or a spreadsheet, but I'm going to just do it like this hard-coded in, just to make the point, right? And so now I have, uh, oh, no, no, okay. So uh, uh, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0 is 0, 0, 0 is, uh, 1, 1 is 0. Okay, so, oh dear. Oh, this should be a colon. Ah, silly syntax error that I then copy pasted everywhere. Okay, so this is now my training data. 
It is an array with objects. So now what I need to do is I am going to say 2, 2, 1, that's my neural network. And I'm going to say, let's see, what do I need to do? <laughs> For uh, data of training data, that's a nice little loop through everything that's in here. I'm going to say neural network train data inputs, data targets. And I probably, I'm just going to, you know, I could pick it randomly. I'm going to go through the data and I'm going to do it like, I'm going to do it like 100 times in the same order, which is probably a problem. I should probably randomize the order. <laughs> let's just do it this way and see what's going on. So let's do that. And then I'm going to test things by saying uh, guess equals neural network feed forward. Uh, zero, zero. Um, and actually, you know what I'm just going to do? I'm going to say neural network feed forward zero, zero, print. So this should uh, give me everything in the console that I want. So this is, I haven't been too, uh, am I being careful enough? This is the inputs with the target. 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 I'm just going to train it with that like 100 times in the exact same order, which is probably a terrible idea with stochastic gradient descent. And then I'm just going to call feed four. And I think I still have in my matrix library this print function, which just like console.tables the stuff out. All right. I don't know. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> feed forward. Print is not a function. All right. Neural network. Oh, you know what? It gives me a nice little array. I forgot. I don't need to do this. I could just console. I forgot that it, the library itself gives me a nice little array. So let's just console log. I don't need that print thing. So let's try this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't look very good, right? I should be getting 1100, zero, zero, like or close to it. Let's train it like, uh, so let's try training it like 10,000 times. Hey, this is maybe interestingly sort of better. Um, one zero zero one 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 zero zero. So I'm definitely feeding in the, all the proper inputs. Is my training data? Correct. Zero, 01 gives one. One zero gives one. Zero zero gives zero. One one gives one. So I think I really need to randomize the order, right? I've really got to randomize the order. So let's randomize the order. And in fact, what I'm going to do, forget about even randomizing the order, I'm just going to always pick a random one. So I'm just going to say let data, and P5 has a nice function. If I just give it random uh, training data, it's going to give me a random one. Oh, the learning rate is something I actually should really be careful about. I just put in point 0.1. So that's probably something I need to be more thoughtful about. So let me, um, uh, so let me do it 50,000 times. And let's see what happens in a random order. Oh, da, 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 da. <laughs> Woo -hoo, woo -hoo. So interestingly enough, so I want to do this um, as a coding challenge. Um, I want to actually write an example that sort of like animates and visualizes it as it's learning. I'm saying I have, <laughs> I can't believe this worked. Oh my God. I can't believe I arrived here. I mean, I'm sure there's like problems and it's, uh, but at least it worked for this simple problem. Um, and, but, um, so somebody said I had a typo uh, in the train function. Well, <laughs> I'm sure I do. Don't, I'm so happy right now. So I need to do coding challenge which is actually the XOR problem and also animated as I'm going. So I think I'd essentially do the same thing, but draw sort of like a pixel space and actually iterate over it. And I should see, an, um, you know, the corners would be the, the full Boolean value. I'll explain this when I do the coding challenge. I can't even think anymore. I just got this to work.